Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bow Hunter Chronicles podcast brought to you by Tacticam. Tacticam is by far the easiest way to begin filming your hunts. Whether it's the 4K Tacticam 5.0 or the budget-friendly Solo, Tacticam has something for everyone. It's truly the easiest way to begin filming your hunts. Check them out at Tacticam.com. This year we're also working with Spartan Forge. So Spartan Forge is using military intelligence to track and predict deer movement. And they're creating a neural network that allows the computer to think like you would think about patterning deer and where they would be or should be. Um, There's a lot more things that are coming out. Uh, when the app gets released in the next month or so, um, they're looking at late July or August for the launch of the app. And right now you can sign up and be locked in for the length of your subscription to Spartan Forge um, before the app comes out. Once the app is released, the price is going to go up a little bit. Um, It's an incredible value, but you can use code Chronicles to save 25%. So you're going to save a bunch, and that's going to save you going forward. Now, they've got some big announcements. They're doing a veterans hunt um, that's going to allow some of the veterans. uh, I think they're going to pick like six winners, I believe, and they're going to get to go on a hunt in PA with – some of their pro staff. So the pro staff on Spartan Forge is Andy May, Taylor Chamberlain, Parker McDonald, Greg Litzinger, um, Johnny Stewart. Uh, there's just some incredible hunters. Garrett Prawl. Um, I know I'm leaving some out, but those are just some um, some of the examples of their pro staff. And once those winners are drawn – they're actually going to get to scout and they're going to look through this. And then some of the information that's going to be available on the app is like public lands available. What's the harvest stats for each county or the idea that you're looking at what seasons are open. Uh, One of the issues that we ran into as far as season dates when we went to Missouri was um, the dates that we went down there was the youth hunt for Missouri. So that, first weekend we got down there we ran into a ton of gun hunters right um so that type of information is going to be available through their app and like i said if you were to sign up now um you'll be locked in for the price going forward and you'll have access to the app once it comes out um you can check them out at spartanforge.ai and again you can use code chronicles to save 25 percent so Definitely check them out. This week's podcast, we're talking with uh, the Bow Hunting League. So, the Bow Hunting League is like a bow hunting contest for deer hunters, uh, but it's not what you think. I mean, yeah, it takes the biggest bucks from each state, and it takes the team of three who has the combined amount of inches. Uh, but basically, what they're doing is they're just trying to implement. Um, kind of like a community. So instead of being like me versus you, they're trying to have everybody kind of help build each other up, and especially for new hunters and things. Um, and these guys have great hearts, and it's it's an awesome, uh, you know, going into it, I was thinking, you know, I don't know, it seems like a hunting contest. We don't shoot big bucks. You know, how does it apply to us? But um, it doesn't come through like that at all. One of our Patreons, Edwin, was uh, one of the guys that was on the King of the Tines hunt, and they talk a lot lot about that in this podcast. And um, so it doesn't have to be all about just the biggest bucks. They have prizes for any buck that's entered um, you know, just a random raffle. There's, uh, all different things. We get into that in the podcast, but, um, it really is just a community of hunters, uh, kind of helping and, um, 
kind of building each other up. Um, so it's really great. And these guys are great. And I mentioned it was one of our Patreons, Edwin. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our latest Patreon, James Tuttle. Um, thank you so much for, uh, you know, choosing to support the show. We really appreciate it. And, um, you know, I'll get that T-shirt and swag pack out to you here um, just as soon as uh, I get a chance here. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Patreon, Patreon is like a crowdfunding for creators. And it helps us to, um, you know, cover all the costs uh, that are associated with hosting the show. Um, it allows us to do things like uh, the next podcast that we have coming out is a podcast about the Total Archery Challenge and our experiences out there. Um, you know, we put on a barbecue. We had, you know, some of the Patreons, uh, Robbie and um, TJ. TJ shot with us, actually, uh, come out, Ryan. And, uh, you know, we just cooked a bunch of food, had a bunch of beer, and there's a you know quite a few people there. The guys from Latitudes were there. Um, my buddy Craig, there was just uh, a bunch of people that were there hanging out. We met a lot of new people, uh, but it allows us to do stuff like that. And um, But anything beyond that, we put back into uh, giving back to the, the actual Patreons themselves. So uh, we do quarterly giveaways in conjunction with our partners. So Tacticam this quarter is giving away a fish eye package like so the fish eyes are waterproof they can be submerged um, it's a wide angle and they actually sell a kit that has actual additional like super wide angles um, so it's real cool you can put them under the water but i think that's going to be like the solo killer because at that price point um, you can get a, a wide angle camera that's um, a great point of view option for um filming you when you're in the tree and for guys like us that are saddle hunters you know you put that right on top of your bridge um you know for the price it's a great camera and it works in conjunction with like say a 5.0 so if you had a 5.0 on your bow like i shot my a point last year with uh tacticam the older version the 4.0 um, and the footage was just tremendous and so you could have a 5.0 on your bow and one of the the cheaper solos up in the tree it's not going to be 4k but i mean for most of what we're doing and that doesn't it's not going to be uh you're going to be right within range of that camera so it's not like it's going to seem like it's far away or anything like that it's going to be right in your face um you know one button you could turn on that uh that fish eye and uh, it's going to work exactly with that other one so push one push one button and the tacticams use like a bluetooth um kind of like um the same technology that your um tv remote does so that battery isn't just being constantly sucked down um just by being on like some of the other uh remotes uh for other point of view cameras um so we're Tacticam is giving away one of those packages. Uh, but like I said, we put our own money back into it. And this one is going to be, you know, in July starts a new quarter. So uh, I just got the shipping notification for our new hunting bee stand. Uh, so Dan Infault's hunting bee stand, we bought one of those. We wanted to have one of the first uh, ones that comes out. And uh, we're going to get that. We're going to open it up, take a look at it, and then we're going to give it away. So um, that's going to be you know one of the patrons is going to win that uh we also partner with base map base map has this new feature where um, they have an overlay when you hit the the north facing button it orients the map north but then it puts a scale on there and so the farther you zoom out it, it changes the um the distance measurements on that scale but um you know you can zoom it right in down to like you know less than 100 yards and so when you're on your way into the stand in the dark, um, you know that you're, you're real close. You just don't know where it is. And you could look on there, it overlays that distance map. And uh, you can say, okay, it looks like it's about 40 yards up there. Well, you know what 40 yards looks like. So, you know, you should probably even know how many steps that is. So for that amount of distance, you can check that out. Like the new base map. I mean, their interface is, is really, really improving, and uh, there's a lot of really awesome features on there. Um, 
but they're giving away one of their pro memberships as well as a swag pack, so like a shirt and a hat. And you heard us mention uh, Spartan Forge in the opening. Uh, he's donating uh, one of the year subscriptions to that as well. So, um, you know, that's a lot of different things. And the guys from Zinger Fletchings, um, I just shot those at the Total Archery Challenge and was very impressed. And on the next podcast, you'll even hear John's opinion on those. And I think it changed after seeing me shoot them at the Total Archery Challenge. Um, but, you know, those are 3D printed, uh, completely flexible uh, compression fit fletching. So for guys that don't know how to, don't have the stuff, don't have the time to fletch their own arrows, um, they just slide right on. Uh, we're giving away uh, some of those. And then every one of the Patreons, they get access to um, the Vitals Live as well. So that is a live webinar series. You can go back and watch uh, the videos. But we take your questions in real time and you can sit there and ask questions to Andy May, Zach Farrenbaugh, Greg Litzinger, John Eberhardt, um, Dan Infault, Garrett Prawl. We've had all of those on there. So you can go back and see content that's not available from them, uh, answering you know specific questions from uh, viewers, as well as uh, get access to the new live sessions where you can get your questions answered specifically from them. So you can check that out at vitalslive.com. But if you sign up for Patreon, uh, we'll give you all that information for free. Um, but yeah, you can check all that out at uh, patreon.com forward slash Bowhunter Chronicles podcast, or um, you can just go to our Instagram and click on the link in the bio and it's there. It's on our website, bowhunterchronicles.com. But Either way, we appreciate you just listening to the podcast. Um, we were It was really awesome to see everybody up at the Total Archery Challenge and get to hang out. And uh, we're definitely going to have to have a pay, Patreon meetup um, up there uh, next year. Um, we're already trying to figure out how to do a better job at uh, sitting and meeting up with everybody, uh, kind of making ourselves available. So um, really appreciate it. But uh, I think you're going to really like this uh, podcast. A uh, little outside of like what we normally do, but uh, these guys are great, and I think it's a great, uh, a great thing that they have going on. So um, I know you're gonna like it. Enjoy the episode. Thanks. All right, everybody. Adam back with another episode of the Bow Hunter Chronicles podcast. We are uh, currently getting ready to go to the Total Archery Challenge, and uh, John is finishing up honeydew lists. Uh, getting pulled in every direction. And of course, uh, if he wasn't building bows and building Uncle Frank's bow, then uh, what else would he be doing two days before we have to leave, right? So uh, getting a 65-year-old man ready to shoot 125-yard targets with a tape that goes to 80 um, is, uh, you know, not for the faint of heart. So uh, this is night number two for John. And uh, unfortunately, he's not going to be able to make it. Uh, but right now I have um, Ben Harrison and Daniel Porter on the line from the Bow Hunting League. And uh, if you guys haven't heard about this, it's pretty cool. Um, I I think I was on a team like back in 2017 with the Bow Hunter Block Scope guys. And uh, we started off really strong, like doing some of the off-season stuff. And then as we got into it, because everybody was logistically all over the place and we weren't really keeping up together um it was difficult so um got back in touch with these guys from uh, chad from backcountry rookies he reached out they were just on his podcast and uh, one of our patreons edwin was actually um i believe he was in like their end of the year deal uh last year with uh, some of the king of the tine stuff and uh I, I can see Ben smiling here. So, you know, Ed went over at the, the stanky ranch there. He, uh, he makes an impression. That's for sure. So, uh, and Edwin wanted us to have these guys on too. So when, uh, Chad reached out, it was super easy. Um, so how are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing Night great. Three. How about yourself? Oh, you know, I'm keeping busy. My bow's all set. So I got my, it's funny because uh, we'll get into this when you talk about like who you guys have and your sponsors and all of that. But, um, you know, I just 
got my arrow set and uh, one of the guys or one of the teams or one of your sponsors are uh, some Michigan boys, the Zinger Fletching guys. And yeah. uh, I just put some of the Zinger Fletchings on my arrows for Total Archery Challenge because I feel like uh, there's going to be no better way to really test and try those um, except for shooting them those long distances and seeing how they group with my other arrows. So uh, that's going to be my first real test with them. Um but yeah, so I mean, it's just par for the course for me. Podcast, podcast, edit, publish, talk about <laughs> hunting. You know, <laughs> I'm excited for you. That's uh, the tack is a lot of fun. I did uh, Tennessee earlier this year, and I did Utah a couple of years ago. And man, they put on a really good shoot. Okay, and that's Daniel. That's talking. Ben is uh, the other voice that you're going to hear. So why don't you give us a little bit of background on you guys? Um, Ben, why don't you go first? This is your baby. You started this whole thing, um, and you probably, it sounds like it's its all-consuming, so maybe it was a good idea, maybe it wasn't, but uh, yeah, give us a little bit of history. Yeah, and you're saying the, sometimes wonder if it's a good idea. Uh, Daniel keeps me on track with a little pep talk here every now and then, so it's good. But um, <clears throat> yeah, my name's Ben Harrison. I live in Indiana, originally from Tennessee, and uh we started the bow hunting league uh, competitions uh, back in 2015. Uh, very humble beginnings. We started as a Facebook page and just these personal connections, getting guys on teams and stuff. And <clears throat> last year was our sixth annual uh, deer contest. We had 576 teams uh, in the contest, uh, a little over 1,700 competitors. <laughs> And uh, it was our biggest ever. We almost had, we, we almost reached 50,000 inches of, of antler entered in the contest. Uh, this contest is free. All of our contests are free. Um, and let's see, that's kind of a little general overview. Yep. So uh, I'm, I'm Daniel Porter. I am currently working down in Florida. I'm in the Air Force. So it's a, uh, it's a great gig because I, I'm super fortunate. I bounce all around the U S and even overseas and I get to hunt everywhere that I go and meet a bunch of people who hunt. You know, I love networking with people, meeting like-minded people. And, uh, because of that, you know, uh, the past couple of years since I started hunting, like I, I do multiple States every year. I do elk, I do whitetail. I drew a phenomenal mule deer tag this year. So I just love, I love to hunt and I love to talk to like-minded people and, that's part of the reason that I am a huge fan of the bow hunting league because uh, it's it's the diehards, but it's mixed with the weekend warriors too, and everyone gets along. Like we we try to foster a community where, you know, if you're a bow hunter, come as you are. This this is not an elitist group. Uh, we want walks of all different paths to come down here. So that's my little punch. Nice. All right. So there. I mean. There's a lot of things to unpack in this, um, and we, you can come at it from a whole bunch of different angles. I mean, you guys have teams. There's uh, lots and lots of prizes. There's um, ways to keep involved. Um, I think we're going to stick maybe to your your um, deer hunting contest because, you know, that's what everybody's getting ready for. Uh, if you're not going elk hunting, um, which I don't believe you're much of an elk hunter, uh, Ben, right? But that's kind of kind of all, kind of all Daniel's thing. But... Um, uh, before we get into that real quick, um, so most of our listener base are, you know, public land guys or new hunters, guys that are trying to take it to the next level, that are trying to learn, that are trying to, um, you know, maybe kill their first deer with a bow, maybe try to uh, kill their first buck with a bow, maybe kill their first basket rack eight point. I mean, uh, I hunt in Michigan and that's, you know, that's the bread and butter. That's what fills tailgates, you know, around here. That's what, you know people are just sitting around drinking, drinking beer, celebrating, you know, all of these, these deer. So when you guys are talking nationwide and you're talking, you know, Kansas, you know, Edwin's from Iowa killed 300 and some plus inches of uh, antler just himself last year. And, and guys that hunt multiple, multiple states, we can get into that. But so how does a guy that, you know, doesn't kill regularly or, you know, hasn't, killed anything ever you know how, how does this um apply to him or why would it appeal to him or you know why should he become a part of it ben you mind if i grab this real quick 
I can give you two steps and then you can fill in the blanks. Um, Sounds good. First thing they need to do is join the Bowhunting League Facebook group, okay? The next thing, they need to find the uh, need a team post. There's places they can say, hey, I want to compete in the contest. I don't know any other hunters, stuff like that. Um, and then as far as filling in the blanks and, like, learning and all those things, you know, you're hunting with with two other bow hunters for the season. So you're able to not only talk to them, but talk to other people in the group, but you're able to stay motivated and bounce tactic ideas and stuff off of them. Um, but go ahead, DA, fill in the blanks for me. So here's the thing. Um, I started hunting in 2014 and, and just like everyone else, like it, it's kind of intimidating, you know, you, you got a lot of questions, you got a lot of concerns. And, and when I started back in 2014, forums were still kind of a thing where you could go on and you could ask some questions and people would help you. But, you know, if you look at some forums these days, they become really aggressive. You know, you go on and ask a question and everyone's just like, you know, get out of here, noob, or, or they'll flame you. And, and I really missed that aspect of just people willing to help others out. So kind of like Ben said, if you're new and you're not sure if you even want to play in this contest, that's fine. Come over and check the page out because what I can promise you is you're going to see a bunch of people, successful people who have been doing this for years. And what I like about these people is they're not your Instagram quote unquote stars. They're not your, um, industry quote unquote people they're your everyday average joe hard working person just like you and me who is going to take that time if you were to shoot them a message and say hey man i see you're in the same state as me and you've been killing you know great public land bucks do you mind if i just call you one day and you know pick your brain these are the kind of guys that'll give you that time of day and, and it's wonderful uh we have some of the smartest hunters on this page that are just killing big bucks like you said you know said so edwin and iowa killing over 300 inches of uh you know beautiful bucks that's all throughout the united states where these guys were going to take that time and and teach these younger generations or these new hunters what to do beyond that and i'm going to put this back over to you ben up until a couple of years ago you know it, it was kind of focused more on like you know you kill the biggest bucks and you're going to win the contest, but we don't want it to just be about that. We don't want people to, you know, see that in the beginning and then not join. We've created some categories and prize packages. So everyone has a chance of winning some stuff. And again, this is a free contest. So I, you know, I don't care if you, this is going to be your first season with a bow or if you've hunted 50 seasons come in because you will have a shot at winning some prizes. Yeah. And if, and if, if something, if everything doesn't fall into place and you don't, you know, you don't have any success. Nobody's looking up the zeros, you know, um, you know, you'll, you will get some things out of it. Uh, like you were saying something for everybody. Uh, so <clears throat> just talking about some of the prizes and stuff. So we have weekly big buck prizes and we also have randomized, uh, monthly drawings, which those prize packages are two fifty, four hundred dollars and, 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 in value and what's cool about the random ones it doesn't matter if your deer is 50 inches or 150 inches um everybody that enters a buck for that month uh gets entered in that drawing and um we, we, our focus on that is you know having something for everybody try to keep it fun and uh kill a bunch of deer yep and, and to go along with those weekly big buck challenges you know it, it, you could win it with a 50 inch deer that week. It just depends on, on who killed something that week. So again, it's, it's to keep, you know, everyone engaged, have some fun again. Uh, I don't know if we said it yet, but we're up to $40,000 worth of prizes to give away as of right now. And it's still growing. All right. So in that, I mean, the, there's this contest component to it um, and i want to touch on that in, in a second but as you're talking about these weekly uh big buck or monthly big buck but then you know anybody that kills anything is entered into these other drawings i want to know the you said nobody's looking up to the zeros right i i want to i want to know like 
and maybe you don't know, and maybe it's a good thing you don't know. So maybe I shouldn't have framed it that way because now you'll just say, I don't, yeah, I don't know. But um, <laughs> what's the like smallest buck that's entered and maybe the smallest buck that's won um, on one of these drawings? And how was that received? Uh, um, so we just started the drawings, uh, which I say we just start. We've always done prize drawings. Um, we have people that are just in the group that, that I don't know if I've ever entered it entered a deer and they win stuff because we do tons of drawings throughout the year um but as far as the uh prizes and smallest bucks to win uh we had a 100 inch mule deer win uh, i believe it was wyoming last year and that was just because that was the only wyoming buck we had entered and uh he won some zinger fletches and and there was several other things, you know, there was a couple other things he won and, and that was neat, you know, because he, he won just by participating and doing, you know, entering the deer that he was proud of, you know, hundred inch mule deer isn't a trophy to a lot of guys, but it was to him and, you know, being a bow kill and in Wyoming is pretty big deal. And I will say too, when he entered that book and this, this will go for anyone, you know, if you post a buck kill on our page, you're going to get a lot of thumbs up. A lot of engagement saying congrats. We're not here to break anyone down. If you shoot something, if you're pulling that bow back on something, that means you're getting excited and that makes me happy. You know, I, I, I've i pulled my back. there. So last year alone, like I shot a, a pretty good Kansas buck and, and, you know, I got the buck fever. I got all excited, but I'll be honest. I lost my, my marbles when a little 120 inch Florida buck came in on me last year. I shot two foot over its back. I mean, that's, we love that kind of stuff. You know, there's no shaming with us. We're going to have fun with you. Um, but to go with what Ben said, yeah, this is the first year we've actually started the, the weekly big buck and the, um, the monthly drawing prizes, because again, as we grow, we become more fluid. We, we try to, you know, build new things. Yeah, I mean, when you're talking about that, those, I mean, that's kind of like what I was getting at is like even a small 100 inch buck, or uh, as you say, like a small 120 inch buck, you know, I'm from Michigan. Those are three year old, four year old deer here. And it's, it's, you know, there's many guys that'll never go, you know, that I hunt a long time and it'll never kill one like that. Um, you know, without putting in a, a lot of hard work in some of these states, especially the guys that are way out east. So, um, like I said, I, I, I'm just curious as to like that side of it from. Well, well, so something, so, so let's use, you know, we're out near where you're from, like as we're growing, one of the, the individual things that we're trying to do is big buck state, big buck for each state. So, so, um, we're at the point now where, you know, a taxidermist for, I think we have eight or nine states have uh, some taxidermists. Have, we have 15 states that are, that have taxidermist sponsors. Yep. So if you shoot the biggest buck of your state, you get a free shoulder mount. We've got other states that have, you know, uh, archery shops that have donated gift cards. Um, we even have some states where outfitters are saying, Hey, you shoot the biggest buck. Um, you know, we'll, we'll give you a hog hunt or we'll give you an alligator hunt or a fishing hunt. And what's cool about that is, Okay, so the main contest, the three-man team, which we can touch on that here soon. The main contest, yeah, that one's going to come down to the people shooting the three biggest bucks and the team combined. But that doesn't mean that you, you know, you shoot that three-year-old 120-inch buck out where you are, and that's the one that wins it. You could take on a shoulder mount. If your state is sponsored by a taxidermist, you could take home. You know, we got a whole prize package for every state, and each state is growing as we go along. Okay. Yeah, like I say, I, I I'm just looking at it from, you know, we had talked about it a little bit before the podcast and, you know, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable with the audience, the guys that enjoy this show and uh, the ones that, that listen to it and, and kind of why they're listening. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, are really, really just trying to learn. And so when you get into something like this and you add in the word, like, the big buck contest. It's like, psh, I'm out, you know, what, what, what's, <laughs> yep. what's, what's the sense. And I, I would be in the same boat um, yep. as that. Well, and, and again, I, 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 you know, I go back to what Ben said and uh, join up because it, so I, I started hunting out in Oklahoma. I did it all on my own. I, you know, I had no idea what I was doing, but you know, I started networking in the military and then, 
oh, you should go try out this state. You should go try out that state. You know, they weren't telling me where to go, but I felt more comfortable because I was able to communicate with someone from there. Well, you know, let, let's say you've got these new people and they're public land hunters and they want to branch out and do their first, you know, out of state hunt. Well, guess what? You got a group of 20,000 people where, where someone might be entering a bunch of public land bucks from, we'll say Minnesota or, you know, Texas. You can reach out to that person just, and now you've got a contact or multiple contacts where you can, you know, kind of cut down on that learning cur- learning curve and build that confidence. Cause I, I'm with you. I don't, I don't like, you know, having confidence in my abilities or, or, you know, starting out something new. So we have that network and that group of people who would be willing to, to help everyone out. Back to the contest aspect of it, you know, we're seeing um, now granted um, I think hunt wars is doing a pretty good thing. It's kind of like what you guys are doing on steroids um, to, to some degree, um, you know, and filming it and, and, and doing all that and making it yeah, kind of a, that's a really cool platform they've got. It's a pretty neat idea. Yeah. But when you're like states like uh, Wisconsin and there's other states now that are saying like, oh, you can't have hunting tournaments. You can't have, you know, coyote tournaments. You can't have predator tournaments. You can't have uh, big buck poles uh, because of the legislation and stuff like that. So um, have you guys seen any pushback or anything i mean i know i've heard you say daniel that uh you know on your page you know anytime there's any trolls or anything you guys keep all of that to a minimum and especially that's good for you know the the new hunters or the people that are that are trying to learn and you're not letting anybody get bashed um but do you get anything on there from you know people trying to say that animals are you know majestic or whatever <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so, so 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 we we have been very fortunate um because you know we've seen other uh hunting pages they'll they'll have certain uh let's say agencies or you know groups that will join in and then they'll just start running campaigns like anti-hunting campaigns and stuff like that so no we've we've been very fortunate that with that and then you know because of our rules align with you know, like Pope and Young, Boone and Crockett, um, just it's all legal, fair chase. Like, you know, we're if we find out someone's doing something illegal, we're, we're going to report them. You know, I, I, we don't need that around. We don't need that kind of uh, negative stuff going on. So, um, no, we've been very fortunate as far as, you know, no, no issues with, you know, anti hunters or legal ramifications. Yeah. And I'm not talking about like, outside of the law or poaching or anything like that. I'm just saying like they're, you know, these states are saying like, you're not allowed to do that anymore because of, you know, pressure from, you know, political parties, et cetera. No, for sure. For sure. Yeah, and, and we're not, you know, we don't ask anybody to do anything that not, they're not already doing. And we don't profit off of these guys either. It's not a money making event or anything like that. So, uh, it's we're ba- it's basically just friends talking amongst friends you know it's not like a uh, like we have a business that's taking and uh collecting cash or something you know for you know a big butt prize or something like that and honestly that's a good way to put it it's like a big deer camp you know it's it's like you hanging around camp with your biggest buddies like all right who's gonna shoot the heaviest buck this this year yeah, I, I get that. Now, to that point, I guess, um, I guess let's throw it back to you, Ben, on the whole, <laughs> I, I guess the word would be gravity of the whole situation. So you started this little Facebook page, you wanted to do this little bow hunting contest or whatever. Now you got 20,000 people, you got $40,000 worth of sponsorship dollars. Um, you're not doing it for profit. Um, like what's the end game or like, where do you see this going? Or like, do you have a wife that says, dude, what are you doing every single hour that you're not working? Like, yeah, what, what's cool is, uh, she is 100% supportive of everything I do. And, um, she's glad that I enjoy it. And if there are moments that I don't enjoy it, she says, you know, she kind of, gives me a little pep talk and says, Hey, you need to, you know, don't need to worry about that. You know, it's always something exterior. It's not, you know, anything to do with 
you know, me or anybody I care about, but, um, no, I mean, that's <clears throat> like what you're saying in game. Um, we're, we're trying, we, we are doing something nobody's ever done before. Okay. So our end game doesn't look like anybody else's. Um, there are things that can come from people just having a good time and, you know, large numbers. Um, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without the help that we have now. Um, last year when I was wrapping up deer season, I was doing, I was working the scoreboard and doing everything, um, on my own. And, um, with a little bit of support here and there, but um, I was responsible for everything. But now, like I said, it, the end game definitely has changed because now I have help. Um, man, you know, I'd say the the biggest thing we're doing is growing uh, the bow hunting league, bow hunting community, um, getting more people shooting their bows again. Um, you know, this is uh, that the whole archery hunting lifestyle due to dollars uh with license sales and profits made by companies uh has changed the landscape of the archery community and um we are making a huge impact with the youth that are in in this group uh, making a huge impact with uh women bow hunters and uh getting some of these guys back into bow hunting that had left so um yeah just sticking with the camaraderie and the networking stuff. I mean, that's been the big benefits for me. And, um, yeah, I don't, you know, like I said, that I don't really, I don't really have a destination. I guess you'd say we just have a direction, you know, we're just, we're just going a direction and, uh, just keep, keep continuing to grow. And, and I've really focused more, on helping these small business owners here as as of late and that's been my main focus and it's been very um rewarding helping these um these business owners um but that's that's all i had to say really about that well and the, and ben ben's nailing it too so like uh you know someone might be sitting out there like how do they have forty thousand dollars worth of stuff to give away and you know are they taking anything on the side? How does this operate? Like, you know, this is our, our team is purely voluntary right now. Like I'm just a motivated hunter and I love meeting people and helping people. So like, you know, I, I, I volunteer to help Ben out and uh, there's a whole mess of other people, you know, James is in there too. Every single day we, we do it cause we love it. And um, what, what I love about what Ben's doing is, you know, we we're not promising any of these businesses that, you know, we're going to be able to give you X amount of thousands of dollars worth of sales. If you come on with us, no, we're, we're just, you know, pure raw, like, Hey, you know, we've got a following of this many people. Um, if you, if you want to come do something with us, you know, uh, here are the contests that we do, you know, if, if you want to donate some product, uh, for one of these contests, we'll make sure that your name is advertised. You know, we, we got multiple variations and ways that we'll, we'll get your name out there. And, and it's just everyone helping out everyone, you know, we, they direct ship to the people who win. Um, we like to keep it that way. That way, you know, people aren't just questioning, like, is anything being taken off the top? Nope. No, it's just super simple. Everyone wins because people are signing up for a free contest. They can win some prizes. Ben's Ben's lucky because he doesn't have to pay anyone to work for him. You know, he's got a bunch of passionate dudes that, that help him out and, and then the small business people, you know, who, you know, instead of spending thousands and thousands of dollars for advertising fees, you know, you might be just able to give a little something here and we, we got you out to 20,000 people. Sure. And that's awesome to hear. I mean, and it's very uh, holistic, you know, I mean, very homegrown, you know, very organic type thing. Um, but like you said, Daniel, I mean, guys in the the quote unquote industry, which, you know, somehow it's now myself. It's like, Oh yeah, I'm part of the industry now just because I put myself in there and you guys are in the same boat. I mean, you'd be like, Oh yeah, well you're in the hunting industry, right? You have this bow hunting league. Um, 
and everything ends up, you know, everybody has to look at it, you know, a little bit deeper and say, you know, what are these guys really about? What's, you know, are they trying to portray it as one thing? And then it, it's certainly not. So it's very good to hear that that's, you know, kind of the thing. I, I, I mean, for everything that I do with the podcast, um, I don't envy you because I know how much work that I have to put in to, to mm-hmm. do something and it's mm-hmm. not necessarily on that scale. Um, so, well, and that's kind of the thing too, like, you know, uh, I'm a firm believer in doing my own due diligence. So, you know, if, if you're hearing this right now and, you know, we, we often get the, well, that's too good to be true type stuff, but come on again, come on over to the page and, you know, I got a pretty good gut. If something feels wrong or icky or like, I, you know, I'm, it's just not right for me. I, I can get out, but I have a feeling that if, you know, people came over and checked it out, they might, they might kind of feel like they're at home. The main contest. And, and right now this is the one and only deer contest before we segment it out into other sections is it's a three man team concept. So, so you and two of your buddies, or, you know, you can go on and meet two random people from the page. We'll sign up. Uh, we're doing signups right now until August 31st. And the concept behind the contest is each member's top scoring buck will be added up and the combined score of your three-man team will account. That'll be your team score. And then team with the highest score wins. We go off of, you know, Pope and Young scoring. But when I say that, it's not net score. We go off of gross scores. So, you know, you shoot a 102 inch gross score, buck. that's your score. Um, you're allowed to do unlimited upgrades pending. It's a legal harvest. Um, this year we are forecasting the top 10 teams will be taking home prize packages on top of that we will give a prize package to the top youth team, the top traditional archer team, and the top women's team. So, you know, in a very basic form, it is a three-member contest. We go from September 1st until the end of February because we have southern states that don't close until then. And that's my little overview. So real quick on that, um, how are you verifying score and verifying harvest? Let's say I shoot your typical Michigan 60 inch, you know, basket rack, whatever. And uh, I enter that. And then on my drive home, I see one that's dead on the side of the road. That's bigger. I pick that one up and say, yeah, I want to upgrade like immediately. Um, you know, h- how are you keeping that sort of thing out of there? So very, very similar to the other, uh, way, other trophy, you know, trophy entering, con- you know, things like Pope and Young and, and, you know, Buckmasters and Boone and Crockett. You know, if somebody was going to cheat, they can cheat in our contest, just like they do in those, you know, they can lie. <clears throat> One thing that's different with ours though, is when you have two other members that are on a team with you, um, they are also connected to your deer. Okay. So if you do something illegal or if you harvest a deer with a gun or something like that, not only are you, putting your name out there in a negative light, you're also, you know, the teammates are connected to that deer. Second thing, uh, with, with it being social media and not just, um, guy, you know, he, he's, you know, he shoots one of the rifle during both season, find his house and said, I'm going to go, I'm going to get in the record book, you know, and I don't have to, nobody has to know anything about me. <clears throat> it's very, um, there's lots of exposure with our contest because everything has to be submitted. We have to get a photo of the deer and the score sheet. And, you know, when that gets put out there and if there's a, I don't know, like a double drop time, 12 pointer, you know, 200 inch 12 pointer or something uh, that was well known in, a, in an area, 
And this guy went over and spotlighted it one night and then said he killed it behind his house, which is 15 miles away. Um, there's a good, there, you know, there's a better chance that deer's not going to get entered. Uh, the next thing is with verifying because not everybody knows how to score a deer, right? So we have informational videos in the, in the, in the, in the contest and on the, in the group. Um, also, every deer before it's entered into the, into the scoreboard, into the spreadsheet, um, it has several sets of eyes on it. So we're looking, we're looking at the, the score sheets, verifying that they're not missing mass measurements, verifying they're not adding mass measurements, uh, looking for unique things like there's 15, 20 inches of non-typical or something like that. Uh, we'll follow up with that hunter. And if we don't have a good photo, um, we follow up for additional photos of the rack, you know, stuff like that. But before it hits our scoreboard, um, it goes through several layers of, of review. So that is realistically the only thing we can do um, because this is, this is what happens. <clears throat> if we send, if we require everyone to get an official score done, even though Buckmasters doesn't have a drying period, we start missing out on the deer that, you know, on, on your regular eight pointers, you know, your hundred, 115 inch eight pointers, um, ones that won't qualify for a book. Uh, we still want to celebrate with those guys and we don't want someone to feel like they have to go an extra step when they know what they're doing and uh, we can see, hey, we, we want to give everybody a chance. Just like um, we want them to give us a chance, we give everybody else a chance. And um, we found that most competitors have a general idea of what they're doing. And um, once they've been in the, the contest a year, they're trained up and they're experts in it. And the thing is, we really don't have to police things very much um but but just try to answer the the cheating question the, the cheating question gets brought up um actually gets brought up less nowadays may may happen more you know while we have because we have prizes stuff a lot of bigger prizes but it happens less now than it did early on because we've created this culture of um guys that that want to be here they want to do the right thing and you know the people that want to lie and that want to cheat sure they could but it, eventually that becomes a little bit less fun because you know you're cheating you're 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 um screwing other people you know screwing good guys over and and that yeah so so you know i, I still want to believe that people have integrity and, you know, I, I would say that 99% of our page has integrity, you know, that that's not even a thought that they would, you know, do something wrong. And, and But kind of like Ben's saying is, you know, you've got that team accountability, but the way with social media works these days is let's say someone did cheat. Well, guess what? We, we love to celebrate our winners and, you know, put pictures out there stuff gets around, you know, it, it might not be found right away, but it might be three or four months later. Someone might send us a message like, Hey, Johnny submitted this book, but, uh, that book was, uh, killed two years ago, you know, and, and, and we can't, we can't do anything about the fact that, you know, he might've already taken the prize, but Johnny's gone now, you know, we're, we're not going to deal with Johnny anymore. And the, uh, the other thing too, cause you asked kind of about like proof of harvest. Um, there's a lot of strategic thought that goes into any time we make a decision. And some people might not feel comfortable providing harvest information, or they might not even know how to do that or upload it. Or, you know, we, we try to keep it as easy as possible while giving us enough information as possible to make a decision, whether, it, you know, it's the size of a buck, if it was a fair chase buck, et cetera, et cetera. So, we try to cut down on the friction between the user and the contest because we do want them to participate. Okay. And so, um, and I think probably, 
you know, you guys since day one have gotten better and more refined in your process and you've seen, you know, maybe things that have changed. Sure. Um, how many states are involved in like in this contest, you know, out of all of them? And then um, do all three competitors have to be from the same state on a team? So you do not have to be from the same state. Um, we, we have a lot of people come in all the time uh, and they might, you know, we, we'll see Oklahoma, Massachusetts and Wisconsin, you know, that just make it up as you go. And then uh, going into this year, because we have finally started to break out into the Western um, hunting grounds, I would say we probably represent 38 to 40 states right now. Maybe even more, but just, you know, I, I'm always paying attention to the page and where people are from. I would say, let's just go with 40. We represent 40 of the states right now. And it's awesome. I mean, that, that's so cool that, you know, we, we almost have all 50 states represented in this, you know, in this one bow hunting contest. Yeah, I think we had bucks entered in 31 different states last year. Like you were talking about a little bit, and we talked about with Edwin, you know, this king of tines what is that so the king of the tines it is your top five bucks for this season and we will have a, a, a handful of guys kill five plus deer and um it's just your cumulative score for those five bucks uh there's no restriction on how many you kill in each state um uh, and the king of the tines has the most inches out of his five bucks um, for the season. Um, Edwin, the very last day, so we do, we do, I, I think you had to talk to him about it, but we had the opportunity to hunt together. We hunted together in what's called the showdown. The showdown is the, is the end of the year finale for the top 10 in the king of the tines and the top three bucks harvested uh, for the season. And so you've got 13 guys that are invited to go on a hunt together. Last year, we went to uh, North Florida and we had 13 different guys from 12 different states at that hunt. We had Wisconsin, uh, Oklahoma, Ohio, guys from all over the place. And what was neat is we all got to hunt together. You know, you've got you don't have to hold anybody's hand because obviously they are there because they killed deer mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody, you know, prior to the hunt, you know, we had a, um, we had a, um, a thread going, you know, we were able to communicate with each other and you're already developing these relationships with these guys and you, you, you can't, you basically camp out together, hunt together for the weekend and just get to have a big old time. And that's, that's basically, you know, how the King of the Tines and the showdown uh, work. So I, I got to make a little plug for, for Edwin too. So kind of funny. So like here, here's this, this showdown where, where all these big buck killers are going to meet up and have this cool little contest with each other, you know, and whoever shoots the biggest buck at the showdown weekend takes home a prize package. Well, we all show up a little bit earlier than everyone did. He, he drove like 20 hours straight <laughs> and, and, and he shows up and he goes out for the first hunt and, and he's just going to walk around an area and scout. And, and mind you, you know, this is, this is Florida. So, you know, we're, we're not chasing monsters and, and Edwin just came from Iowa. So <laughs> Edwin's walking around and he has this little four corn buck come up on him like 20 yards away and he's just looking at the thing like yep there's a buck and the buck buck goes off and uh he comes back he's like yeah i saw a buck I'm like oh what'd you see he's like oh four corn i'm like how big was it eh, probably you know 14 inch main beams blah blah i'm like oh, why didn't you shoot it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a legal buck down here, man. You just passed up a legal buck, and and, and it's funny because you know I'm sure he was tired, and, and we've all been there where we've been up for way too long. But uh, ultimately, he could have actually won the contest if he would have shot that thing. But it probably didn't, you know, 
convert to him like you know he just shot 350 inch bucks or something like that and you know he he passed on the little four corn that would have won him the contest it was a, it was a fun time we won't ever let him live that down no that was pretty wild then they had that big snowstorm come rolling in so he went ahead and left like <laughs> he, he he had like a he was i think he was in florida for like i don't know 14 hours maybe <laughs> he turned around yeah. and left <laughs> no he's uh. right you get all kinds. That's wild. Now, I remember hearing on that podcast that you guys did with Chad on the Backcountry Rookies, and if you guys haven't heard that and you want to uh, dive in, definitely go check that out. Chad's great over there. Um, but you said most of the guys that were in your King of Tines and that were in the the your showdown or whatever you were calling it there, um, most of them were private land guys, hadn't hunted a whole lot of – public land um now i don't want to say you know that that it's one of those real slippery slopes or whatever where you put you know i hunt public i hunt from a saddle i hunt from right kayak i do crossfit and i eat kale Um, (laughs) no send it send it send it no i mean that it's just one of those things where you know, you, you, you find yourself on this really slippery slope. You guys are trying to do something, you know, that's really great. And, um, you're doing a phenomenal job, you know, including everybody and, um, you know, making it, uh, I, I want to say as, as balanced as you possibly can for, uh, I heard you say in that podcast, you used an example of guys from Vermont versus guys from Kansas and Iowa and, and, and things like that, as far as, uh, making it, even making it state specific. Um, but any thoughts on the public land versus private land type? Um, so, so, so I, I predominantly hunt public and, and I do got to say that in, in the showdown, I would, you know, we, I know we said a lot of public land hunters, but kind of bouncing back to it. I think it was a solid mixture of public private because uh, there might've been a couple people who only killed their bucks on, on private, but, you know, Ben and I both hunted like seven states last year. And I want to say only two of mine were private grounds. Everything else was public. And I I firmly believe that over these next couple of years that the, ting, the king of the times could go either way. Uh, it could be a year full of public guys or it could be a year full of private, especially because people are really starting to branch out and try and do public grounds. And again, if you have this platform where you can meet people and so, so I look at this, um, that King of Tines, uh, showdown from that group of 13 people, six people are hunting with each other this year in multiple different States. Just, just, a qu- just from a quick connection, we had a Turkey contest where we counted up Ben, I think 17 different people swapped hunts. Yep. Lots of guys going out to see Merriam's and stuff in like Nebraska and all kinds of stuff. So I, I want to say, you know, like, you know, you might be a, a public hunter right now, but you could meet that person who's going to say, come on out here and, and try my private or vice versa. You could have grown up hunting a, a well-groomed and manicured farm that your grandparents had for years and you've never stepped foot on public, but you know, you, you might link up with someone who's just awesome. You want to go out there and meet with them and hang out and now you're going to try that public time. So as far as public versus private, I do it all. I, I just love hunting. Um, I cut my teeth in public, and I'm always going to continue to pub, public hunt. Um, I don't own any private yet, but honestly, I think when I do, it'll be more for me to invite people to come out and play with it because I just love a good camp of people. Sure. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I just heard that on there, and um, I, I, it made me really think about you know, how – I guess how it was structured, and I wanted to ask you guys about that just simply based on, like I said, what I heard there. Um, and you know, you kind of make I'm a, I'm a numbers and data person, you almost kind of make me want to like try to track that somehow. And, and there won't be any perfect way, but I could I could do a poll like, hey, if you entered a buck last year, was it a public or a private kill, um, or both? Uh, and, and I, I could do that every year because because you know what, I, I would probably this is a hypothesis. I would say the majority of our people are public land hunters. 
Okay, and I, I, I mean, I know for a fact that that's what our listenership is, and I, I, there are some guys that, you know, obviously hunt private and, you know, and enjoy our antics, I guess, and the guys that we bring on because, you know, there isn't anything that, you know, doesn't necessarily translate public to private. It just all ends up being, you know, deer movement and pressure and kind of yep, yep. philosophy, sure. I guess. Sure. And, you know, what's crazy is, you know, I didn't hunt a stitch of public land until I moved to Indiana. And 95% of my hunting in Indiana is public land. And a lot of that's by choice because I do have some access to some private farms. and uh, But they get hammered so hard that I'm out searching and and I'm able to actually find the deer and find where people aren't just like what your a lot of your listeners are uh, um, you know they're doing and you know one thing about public land in which i've never i haven't talked to any of your listeners that i know of other than edwin and and before before he came you know you know he really don't hunt a whole lot of public anyway in in iowa but uh, you know if you can find areas that aren't getting messed with it doesn't matter where you're at um you're gonna have deer there and and that's what's you know kind of the you know denominating factor and um but there's now we have a lot of public land guys we've got some guys out in uh, north dakota that are killing some awesome deer and they're in some absolute crazy looking terrain <laughs> to kill a deer in you know <laughs> zero trees <laughs> Sure. And and so now, I mean, uh, I've heard enough about this through other podcasts and looking on your website and just other things that it isn't like uh, cut and dry, but I know guys are, are wondering, um, you know, 40K in prizes, that's serious amount of, you know, stuff. Uh, who are the sponsors? I mean, who, who you know, who? what are you, what are you winning when you, when you do this? I mean, and I think maybe for the, <laughs> it seems odd. I, I would imagine that there's like two sorts of uh, people that would be like on the fence about joining. Right. So you're going to have your guys that are just like you guys. And you know, that are saying, you know, we just want the camaraderie. We want to do all of this, but your higher end guys, you know, your guys that keep everything close to the vest, they're these, you know, killers who are just trying to get better, you know, they're doing it year in, year out. They're saying, I could have killed a hundred inch mule deer in Wyoming, you know, no problem, but you got to enter to do it. But maybe they don't want people to know where they're hunting. They don't want people to recognize that. And so is it worth it for me to enter? And then on the same time is the guy that's killing spikes and fork horns. And he's trying to get to that six point. He's trying to get to that, you know, 75 inch basket rack. And he's saying, do I want to subject myself to ridicule? Cause I don't know these guys from anybody. Um, you know, is it worth it for me? What would I win if I won a monthly or whatever? Because, you know, there's a good chance that my buck isn't going to win, you know, my state. Right. So, so, so who's backing you guys? Adam, I see your hat's got one of our sponsors uh, on it. Uh, Latitude? Yep. That, yep. I had the opportunity to talk to those guys. Um, Alex Chop. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to him a couple weeks ago. Uh, they donated uh, three saddle kits. Um, you know, the new Method 2. You can get the win. Uh, win you, uh, one of the teams is going to win uh, three saddle kits. Uh, lots of small businesses, lots of startups um taxidermists pro shops outfitters so not only are you winning a prize but you're all, we are also getting the benefit of cross promoting and running with these small businesses but i was gonna say uh so so like deer crossing archery arrows you know um big freak coolers zinger fletchings gander outdoors out on, uh, out on a limb manufacturing um uh next level deer supplements uh lots i mean like i said i mean i've got we've got over 70 small businesses that we work with so and i'll have um, me and da talked about this i've got everything in spreadsheet and i can 
produce a prize listing, you know, where it's easier for people to understand. Um, but the main thing is, is just being eligible, you know, um, because these things, because the thing is, I can have a prize list 100% up to date, August 31st. They sign up September 1st. We have a company calls us and says, Hey, I want to give you guys $5,000 in product to go to, um, you know, to, to 10 different winners. Well, that's something that you missed out on by not signing up. It uh, could have been the, your favorite company, you know? Um, so that's, that's, you don't want to, cause we, you know, we're so free flowing. There's no, really no contracts. Everything's done with a handshake. I mean, things change. I mean, we may, you may not have a taxidermist sponsor for your state and you say, Hey, I don't, you know, I'm just going to win a hundred dollars a product, to kill the biggest buck. No big deal. I ain't going to sign up. And then a week into the contest, we have a taxidermist reaches out to us and they sponsor the biggest buck for your state. So that's, that's why. And, you know, even like, even just something in taxidermy, okay. Tax, you know, shoulder mounts on the low end are $500 a piece. All right. And we've got some award-winning taxidermists on our, on our program. What's cool about it is you may have not even know, known that taxidermist was within drive distance of you. And now that you see that they're in the league and they're supporting us and, and you know, they're doing this philanthropic um, thing, you go reach out to them and, and, you know, they, you know, they, you know, they may, you know, work with you a little bit on your mount or get your mount back, you know, sooner. I don't know. I mean, but these are all these companies that are working with us want to grow and want to uh, further their reach. And that's, and you want to be around people that have that kind of energy. And there are some really cool things that are coming out of the woodworks that, that I didn't know about. Other people might be like, man, he's dumb because he didn't know about that. But I'm going to use one example. Like we got tag it decals. Um, so, you know, what what is their logo, Ben? Like make it, it's a digital taxidermy. Yeah. It's put a buck on your truck. <laughs> yeah. So you, you send them a picture of the buck that you shot that year and, and they'll they'll put it in this phenomenal sticker that you can put it in the back of your truck. So, I mean, it's it's literally all these awesome companies that are coming forward you know some of them are are you know quote unquote b- bigger companies and then others are startups and w- everything in between and honestly it's just great but to go along with what you were saying so those guys that are sitting there like well I don't want to be ridiculed or you know uh slandered or whatever for shooting something so I, I tell you right now I keep a very strict page I don't allow bashing you come in here and you tell me that you shot your first buck and you post that up you're going to have hundreds of dudes sitting there slapping your hand saying congrats right there. Because again, sure, it's a contest, but I, I, I'm at the point where I believe that the contest is such a small piece of what that page actually is. I, I really just think it's a it's a group of bow hunters that are just are in there to have fun. So so I got to mention this, too, and, and this makes some people mad, but I want you to hear me say it. We love all forms of hunting, rifle, crossbow. You know, what, whatever you may do, that is awesome. We're all in this together. But this is the bow hunting league. And we're only going to approve relative content. And that means traditional archery equipment and vertical bows. We, 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 this is not a crossbow hunting league. And, and again, I need you all to hear me say this. If you got an injury, or if you're allowed to use them and use them, that is fine. We, I, I am so pumped that you are able to still get out there and hunt. And, and when I'm older and I need both my rotator cuffs uh, replaced and I'm shooting a crossbow, you know, I, I'm going to be doing it too. But it, we stay very true to who we are because we want to maintain an integrity ourselves. And, and um, I, you know how much it hurts my heart when when someone's excited because they their daughter just shot a you know, their first buck with a shotgun and they're trying to post it on their page. I got to deny it because I'm just, we're trying to keep everything to what it is. But again, coming back. So, um, I shoot what makes me happy. Um, this past season was my best season I've ever had. And and I, I shot some stellar stuff, but I shoot, I shoot scrubs all the time because it gets me excited. I don't want it to ever stop. I'll shoot a I'll shoot a six point if the, the time is right, you know, nothing. 
so so I guess what I'm ultimately trying to say is like there might be some heavy hitters on this page, but they're not going to say anything bad to you. They're going to congratulate you. If you ask them for help, they're going to give you help. But the majority of the people that we have are the ones you're talking about. They might be new to bow hunting. They might be, um, you know, an amateur and still trying to get their first, you know, couple bucks under their, their feet. Come on out. Let's, let's all get this in together and try to work together, to get you that stuff. Awesome. I mean, like I say, I, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm not making accusations <laughs> or anything. I'm not trying to be, you know. You just being devil advocate and you're asking the questions that your uh, viewers are going to have because the thing is, if they don't know who we are, it's the same questions that, that, that we asked ourselves. Like, is this even possible? You know, are we, are we like fooling ourselves thinking that we can create this environment? And, um, and thankfully we, we were wrong. You know? Yeah. And, and, and that's it. I, I, like I said, I'm just trying to be as thorough as I can, um, and, and trying to figure this stuff out. So, uh, that being said, I mean, I think we've pretty much covered all the things that I've got, like on my list. Um, you know, is there anything else that you guys, um, want to put out there for, um, uh, completeness? What I would just like to say is <clears throat> if you have Facebook, look up the Bowhunting League Facebook group. That's your fr- that's the, the first baby step, I guess you'd say. You go in, kind of look around, you know, see if you can figure it out. Then the next step is once once you find a couple teammates, hop on bowhuntingleague.com and sign up. Okay. There is so much stuff going on, so many prizes, so many little contests and things like that. Don't get bogged down trying to figure out all the details. Just understand the only thing you need to do is to sign up on bowhuntingleague.com. That way you're eligible. And then um, you will find every piece of information you could ever wanted as they, those items come up. Um, and And just – and just understand that all you have to do is hunt as you normally do. Um, you know, do your do your normal thing, and 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 enter your deer, and just enjoy it when we celebrate with you. Yep, and and along with just being on the page. Um, so, ironically enough, as I say this, I I do some social media marketing for some hunting companies, and <laughs> looking at what's put out on the market these days just frustrates me because it, it's just, I, I don't know. It, it, everything's all hipster and, and posed. And I, I like, I like true, true people that I'm getting the raw, like, this is me. This is who I am. Um, not what I'm going to do because a company paid me to do it. Um, that's not who we have on our page. We we've got the guys who are out working in the oil fields and the pipelines in the negative 40, negative 50 degrees for five, six months in a row to provide for their family. And, and then they take off some time and they go hunt. You know, we, we got the people who are, you know, out there cutting timber every day, um, forest management, you know, police officers, we don't have people who are getting paid by Instagram and, you know, other companies to shoot in their yoga pants. And this is me checking a trail camera. Here I am, you know, pouring my mineral. I, it, I'm not trying to dog on anyone who does that. Good on you. But um, that's not who we have. You know, we, we want you to come as you are and we want you to have fun. So if you want to see some bucks killed and, and you don't even want to play along this year, come watch. You're going to see. Ben, how many bucks do we have entered last year? 371 and we totaled 49,900 and something odd inches yeah you know come, come on over and celebrate with us it, again if you don't want to, to do the contest come watch some good hard-working people kill some bucks give them a like give them a comment who knows you might make a friend you might make a couple um you might realize like dang now that i'm watching this this was uh this was a good season. You know, this would, this would have been a lot of fun. I, I should do that next year. You know, we get a lot of that and, and that's okay. You know, we, we're just trying to provide a page where like-minded people can talk, hang out, have fun, post pictures and, and just get along without having to worry about being 
bullied, you know, trolled and all, and all that stuff. Well, and you know, for for my guys and for you know, hell for uh, the deer that we killed this year for the podcast, uh, it sounds like all those small five and eight points and you know, a handful of spikes or whatever that might have got you guys to fifty thousand. <laughs> you know, yeah, because yeah, all- honestly, yeah, honestly, honestly, and uh, we got really close. And and the thing is, we probably, you know, just due to you know. <sighs> You know, we get better, even us, I mean, we find better ways to communicate. And I'd say the group, it's the contest itself was probably closer to 65, 70,000, 70,000 inches. But for one reason or another, uh, deer weren't entered. And uh, maybe in communication, may have missed the deadline or whatever it is. And that's why we're painstakingly working towards communicating and just trying to make sure we do the best we can as far as our side. I, I got to come back with something too. Sorry. So, so if you are that Instagram person or you got that YouTube channel or you got that, whatever you're trying to push. So, so on our page, we do very light, light, light advertising. And it's again, only for the sponsors, but a way for people to get their name out is when you do sign up. So like, let's say, Ben and I made a team and we also had a hunting channel, Ben and Daniel's hunting channel. You know, when you kill something like, Hey, uh, it, I killed a buck. You, you know, um, here's a score. I shot it here. Here's a link to the kill. You know, that's way more of an organic, you know, homely post versus people that try to just like, they'll make the same post and share it to 80 different groups. Like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Like, but we still do provide people. If if you got YouTube channels, if you got all that stuff, come on in and we will allow you, you know, when you kill something for the deer contest to get that organic clean post in there. Right. Sure. So since we're kind of at that point right now, John's not here. So we'll start with you, Ben, and then we'll go to Daniel. Uh, It's always, what is your bow setup? So bow arrows, sight all that so right now i'm shooting a uh, matthews verdicts um i shoot 300 uh 300 uh eastern axis 300s i shoot a i like the heavy insert i like the 75 grain uh, brass inserts on them i shoot uh nap spitfire max they're like a inch and three quarter three blade super durable uh had a lot of success with them. Um, uh, what else? Um, primarily hunt out of uh, a summit climbing stand. I use it probably 95% of my hunts. Um, the times that I don't use it, I may be in, in a preset lock on, maybe, but that's rare. I've sat in barns and stuff like that before, just kind of weird situation. Um, and I am a hardcore um, sick of fan for cold weather. Um, I pay for all my stuff, but that fanatic suit I wear has absolutely saved me in some of these Midwestern and late season hunts, especially like I did a hunt in Ohio last year, the last weekend. It was in the teens uh, every day and a lot of wind stuff. But, uh, but anyway, that's as much product pimping you're ever going to hear me do. But it's just stuff I believe in. A lot of this trial and error, um, a lot of my friends and a lot of guys in the group, they use something, they like it. Um, and um, we, you know, that's, you know, they, you know I kind of get some guidance. And uh, Zinger Fletches. So Zingers, um, I know you said you worked with Zingers before. And um, that's probably been one of the most eye-opening products um, for me uh, definitely since last year, but like just the new ones that they have that just came out, they are incredible. And you're going to see this as you're doing your long range shooting and stuff. I mean, I shoot a hundred yards in my yard all the time and um, they're just so perfect in their craftsmanship as a, Fletching arrows, I don't think I'd be able to create the same amount of um, 
perfection, you know, with the, you know, with the angles of the, of the blades or whatever they call, they don't call them veins. I don't know what they call them, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but it's, but anyway, but yeah, that's the stuff I believe in. Um, I don't, there's a lot of things I don't use. I did a post the other day that what product do you not use? What type of product? And it went crazy. I mean, I think we had like 90,000, um, reach on that thing i mean just because so many people were commenting you know and it kind of kind of like a reverse angle to like hey guys check this out you know it's one of my companies kind of thing it's what don't you believe in everybody else believes in the stuff what don't you believe in a lot of guys are saying like most there was several guys saying tree stands and i'm like how many how many people don't hunt out of a tree stand you know like i don't you like, you like hunting on the ground a lot don't you yeah, I'll get, I'll get into that when it's my turn. Keep going. Yeah, that's that's all I got. So so I've got a I've got a Hoyt Carbon Defiant with a uh, it's got a HHA four pin Tetra slider on it. Um, I shoot the Gold Tip XT Hunters, and up front I'm usually rocking the QAD Exodus. Or uh, every now and then I like to bring out the NAP Spitfires as well, but Typically, I'm just running that fixed um, QAD Exodus. My arrow setup's usually around 510 grains. And the only reason why is I mentioned earlier, I like to elk hunt and deer hunt. I don't want to bounce around from different arrow weights. I have one setup and I will go chase anything I want with it. Um, do, 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 do. So I do have a hand climb two combo uh, lone wolf climber that i will throw in my backpack and i will go hunt uh public all over the place i'll just i'll carry it in and out with me every time um but i have added this up not too long ago i've killed 85 percent of my animals from the ground and that's to include a lot of whitetail um over the past couple of years i've really been developing my ground tactics and i mean it's gotten to the point where i snuck into 14 yards on a bedded buck in iowa last year and shot him and then i snuck into four yards on a bedded elk last year i decided to pass him only because it was opening day um, and there was much bigger to be had out there but um, i just have this unbelievable rush when i'm on the ground and I, I don't know, I, I will employ whatever tactic I need at the time to make it work. If it's, if it's a tree stand, if it, it's a tree stand, but you know, what I've found is a lot of the areas that I hunt, I can increase my, my areas to kill them by cutting out, you know, specifically worrying about what tree I need to sit in, um, gear, um, because I do social media stuff now, I kind of just use that money to buy Sitka, but I have always been the budget hunter. Um, I have killed bucks in white t-shirts and jeans. I have killed elk in shorts and a tank top. Uh, don't ask, you know, it's not like I just go out there, um, wearing these things. It just kind of happens, but, um, solid colors uh you know i'm more about the movement controlling that and 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 making sure uh you know i'm not i'm not the wind direction isn't wrong and the thermals are good that's all i care about you can put me in a tutu and i'm going to go shoot something because i'm just more worried about the the movement and the wind and the thermals so please don't put me in a tutu but um Yeah. yeah that's my story I, I forgot to add that I also shoot a HHA Tetra, but mine's a single pin. That just that when you ask me about my setup, I never talk about it. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't ever post and, or somebody asks me, I'll tell them, but like, I don't, you know, we, that's what you get a lot with this group and stuff. I mean, there's not a lot of, I don't know, I'll always plug in all the time, you know, like we don't, you know, it's just kind of like, hey, what works, you know, lots of things can work, you know, um, but you know there there may be some different setups that work better but lots of things work you know it's just whatever the worst 
thing you can do is not have confidence in your equipment when you're drawn fully drawn on a deer or something, you know. Um, if you've got full confidence in it, most things will work. Sure. I mean, but being a bow hunting league, being a bow hunting podcast, like the bow setup is just, you know, you know, there's oh, some yeah. there's some guys that get new bows every year and it's their baby. And then a lot of times what we found is, you know, some of these like you guys had used the term stone cold killers, you know, a lot of these serious public land guys that we talk to, you know, they've they found a bow that shoots good. They found broad heads that have worked for them. They're planning on shooting, you know, inside of 30 yards, but most of them are 20 yards and in, and they just have a tool for the job. The bow is just a tool. It isn't, it isn't their baby. It's not exciting. <laughs> it's, it's simply a tool. Yeah. That's yes. how I am. The, the, the people who tinker give me an anxiety. And I'm, I, I got a bunch of buddies who are the tinkerers and, and, you know, they'll, they'll buy a new bow every year. They'll, you know, Hey, I got my setup shooting perfect. And then next thing I know, they're ordering brand new everything. And it, I, I couldn't do that because, you know, I got what works and I'm going to keep using it, but man, they give me anxiety. It's just yeah, to kind of go along with what Ben was saying, like get good with what you have and, and that should be it. Uh, you know, could there be better out there? Sure. But if you're still killing those deer at, under 25 yards every single time. I mean, I don't break what's not, let me, I don't fix what's not broken. Sorry. Sure. Sure. So if guys want, you know, you mentioned the Facebook page like a whole lot, but you know, uh, Instagram, like what's the best way to get a hold of you guys? Where can they sign up? What's the website? All that. Yep. Bowhuntingleague.com is where the sign up for the deer contest is. We also have Instagram. We also have a, go wild trail so if go wild's one of your things and you like that platform um we have our own trail on go wild and we have the facebook page and a facebook group and, and make sure you get in the group definitely get in the group because sometimes people join the page and then they get a little confused yeah yeah and there's um we've got a lot of informational stuff rolling out that'll come across all the platforms so um, we also have a YouTube, but there's very little on it, but there's going to be a lot more informational stuff on it here very soon too. Yeah. And it, if you want to reach out to us individually too, Ben has an Instagram and a, and a Facebook and I have one as well. So it won't be too hard to find us. Well, awesome guys. Thanks for coming on here. And you know, it's pretty exciting stuff and I'm sure that, uh, we're going to get some guys involved. We'll probably have to get ourselves a, uh, bow hunter chronicles team um, i'm just trying to think of like who do i know in the big buck states that's going to carry me um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah uh look forward to it and like i said thanks guys for coming on here and and hanging out tonight we really appreciate you letting appreciate us get it. on here yep appreciate it man thanks adam yep no problem